there is no doubt that the value from AI comes from retrieval augmented generation most of the time. What I mean is that if you're looking to implement AI in any business use case, then you need to have a rag in order to give LLMs context to your own data. With the help of retrieval augmented generation or rag, you take your documents, you chunk them or split them as shown in this diagram. And then from there, you convert them into numerical representation. You load them into your vector store. And from there, after re-ranking them, you retrieve the relevant information or similar information augmented to your prompt. And then that's how LLM gets more context around your data. And then the response of LLM is more grounded into your personal or custom data. That is what RAG pipeline is all about. This tool, Rag Me Up, tries to simplify this process so that you don't have to write any line of code and you should be able to run your own retrieval augmented generation framework or pipeline with any LLM on any given data set. Recently, they have also introduced the support for Olama, which means that now you can easily run local models with this Rag Me Up and that is what we are going to do in this video. We are going to get it installed locally and then we will set it up with Olama to see how it works. As I said, it's a generic framework. So it provides you a server plus UI that enables you to do retrieval augmented generation on your own data. They recommend to have a GPU of at least 16 GB of VRAM, which I totally agree. You can run it on CPU, but I don't think so. It will be a pleasant experience if it would work at all, especially if you're running with Olama. If you're using any API based software like OpenAI or any other, then that might work. But if you are looking to do it with Olama, I would highly suggest go with at least 16 GB of VRAM or ideally with 24 GB of VRAM. Behind the scene, it uses Java Development Kit JDK. You can use Open JDK or you could go with Oracle's Java. Doesn't matter really, but make sure that you have JDK or Open JDK 17 plus installed. You might, if you're looking to do the user interface in um, this, you would might have to install Scala, which is a multi-framework or multi-paradigm programming language designed to integrate features of object-oriented and functional programming languages and it runs on top of JVM or Java virtual machine. Okay, so I will show you all the steps shortly as how you can do this from scratch up. Before I show you the installation, let's give a huge round of applause to Mast Compute for sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on affordable prices, which I do almost every day here by using mass compute, I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Plus I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on a range of GPUs. So this is my Ubuntu 22.04 and this is my GPU card NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48 GB of VRAM. Let me clear the screen and now let's start the installation. First up, let's create a virtual environment with Anaconda. Let's wait for it to finish. And my Conda environment is created. Let me clear the screen. Let me show you my Java version. So you see, I am already on a compatible Java version, which is 17.0.12. If you have any lesser one, please upgrade or reinstall it. And I will show you the commands which you can use. So all you need to do in order to install or upgrade your Java is to run these three commands. First one is just updating all of the packages in your OS. And then the next two are just installing the JRE and JDK on your local system with version 17. You could go with 18 if you like, but 17 is more stable one. So I already have it as I showed you my version. So I'm just going to clear it. Also, if you don't have a Scala installed on your system, you can install it by running this command where I'm just using the CS setup, which is a Scala installer powered by Corsair. It installs everything necessary to use the latest Scala release from command line. You just press Y here. It is going to download and then install everything here. Let's wait for it. 
You see it has installed CS, it's installed Corsair. And it is going to download the jar file. So let's wait for it. And it has installed Scala, Scala C, CLI. And now it is installing the SPT and which is also done, which is SPT is simple built tool. And now all you need to do is to run this CS setup here. Okay, so it says that it couldn't find it. So the issue there was that I didn't um, source that like my profile. So when I source it like this, it was able to detect that CS and you can see that now the CS setup has worked fine. Let me also show you the version of the simple build tool or SPT. And you see that it is the first time it is just copying that runtime jar and that is done. Now let me clear the screen and then let me paste a command here and don't worry about all of these commands. I'm going to put them in my blog and I will drop the link in video's description. So I have cloned this. Let's cd into it. And then if you do ls-ltr here, you will see there are a lot of stuff. So we need to be in the servers directory. And then if you do ls-ltr here, you will see there will be a requirements file which we need to run. So let me clear the screen. Now let's run this requirements file. It is going to take a bit of a time to install everything. All the prerequisites are done. Let me clear the screen. And from here, you can simply run this command python3server.py and it is going to start the backend server. And before you start the server, I would highly suggest that try to set the environment and I will show you how. So if you if you just open this file vi.env.sample in this server directory you will see that this is the file which they have already provided so if you just quickly scroll to the top try to set the hugging face token here so you would need to go to huggingface.co and then get a sample token if you want to access the model from hugging face so i am just going to keep it blank then this is the hugging face stuff if you want to download the model from hugging face so i'm not going to uh, use it now this is where uh, things get a bit interesting like this is a provenance which you can set now this provenance concept is quite interesting i'm not going to go much into the detail but one of the biggest problem with rag is to do good provenance provenance mean tracking which of the source document retrieved from your database led to the LLM generating its answer. So, or in other words, how do you exactly attribute or tell that if you have multiple documents through which document LLM has sourced its response. So that is what provenance means. And then there are different methods of provenance like re-ranking, attention, similarity. And they say that if you want to do the provenance with uh, API based LLMs like OpenAI ones go with uh, provenance method of re-ranking and there are various reasons of it but if you want to do with the open source ones then go with the attention mechanism because what happens is that uh, this rag may abstract the provenance by looking at the actual attention weights for each token from the answer to the document so which is more grounded by the way anyway so but you can even go with the re-rank one too so i'm just going to keep it as is for now i'll just quickly scroll down and then these are the file types and where your source data is is a data directory which you can specify i'm just keeping everything to default i'm just scrolling down and these are some of the prompt templates in this environment file keep them as is now if you want to use openai just make it true Gemini make it true, Azure make it true, but we want to go with Olama. So I'm just going to remove this here and then I'm just going to say true and then Olama model. Okay, I'll go with Lama 3.1. So let me save it and then you need to do cp.env.sample to env and it is going to create an env file here which I already have. Now this is the time to show you Olama. So I already have Olama installed and you can see that my Llama 3.1 is already running. If you don't know what Olama is, 
this is olama i have done like hundreds or maybe thousands of videos on olama and i'm not exaggerating very easy tool to run large linkedin models locally uh, please search my channel and you should be able to find lot of videos on it installation running is fairly simple in order to install just click on da download here like this linux and then just run this command it is going to download the and install the olama on your system and then if you want to get the llama 3.1 just do olama pull and your model tag like this sorry dot one and then that is going to put the llama 3.1 on your local system so i, I already have olama running my environment file is there and now we can run our server.py with ease so let me run it okay so it has just started downloading some of the stuff here okay so we need to also create a uh, directory with data so let me quickly check where it is not finding it i think it is just going with the current one i'm just checking if it is on my root directory it shouldn't be on the root directory okay they should have created it but anyway let's make the directory here let me clear the screen and let's run it again Okay, let's wait for it to run and now it is just vectorizing some of the documents which i already placed in my data directory so if i go to my data directory i have just played in a placed in a my pdf file which is just contains data about myself and then a very old oracle database documentation in pdf format so let's wait for it to finish these vectorizing documents and now you can see that after this it has started a flask server and our application is running on port 5000 on the local host so let me show you in the browser and then in another terminal window just go to this rag me up ui scala directory and run spt run when you would run it it is going to start the application at port 9000 so because I tried to access it on 5000, the backend, but it's not accessible. So I believe we, and it, I spent like uh, an hour on this one just to figure it out to be transparent. Um, so anyway, so this is what we needed to do and it is not written properly in their GitHub repo, um, not even the paths there. So just had to do a lot of hit and trial, but anyway, there you go. So in another terminal window, simply go to rag me up UI Scala and then run spt run and then it is going to start the application on port 9000 on the local host so let's access it in the browser here i'm just going to go with http localhost and there you go this is our rag me up and then it is asking us what are you looking for so if i just click on search documents here it doesn't show me anything and this is add document okay so it was able to detect these two documents from my uh, data directory which i have pasted you can even upload it from here which is good i like that one but one another bug which i have found out is that you have to have at least one document in the data directory otherwise this won't work hopefully they will fix it soon anyway so let's click on drag me up on the left or such documents and then maybe ask it who is Fahad Mirza. let's see if it is able to access it from the document which i have provided there you go so it is able to access it and it is saying that okay it was able to find it from <clears throat> this provenance like oracle it searched all of these and then it says the information is sourced from document zero this is cool good stuff and then of course you can chat with it more um let me try to see if it works with csv files so i'm just clicking on browse here and then this is my file i think i have a mini finance csv yeah so, so this is a mini finance csv i have yeah this is what i expected because you see there are a lot of bugs in it unfortunately so still i think they are working on it so in that if that happens uh you need to go to from terminal just transfer the file unfortunately the GUI doesn't work so let me try to copy it see how it goes so you see there i just um, manually pasted it in data directory this file and now it is visible here so this is one thing they need to fix i believe and then we can um, 
chat about it. So this is a mini finance file which contains some data with a random dummy data from different countries of different products. So maybe I could say that uh, maybe I'll just go with this uh, Karatera one because this is I'm just going to copy it and then I'm going to ask it maybe about unit sold how oh, is that okay you, maybe yep. I'll just go on my browser and I'm going to ask it how many units sold for product Karatera let's see should be interesting okay so you see it was unable to find it so which is not good okay so maybe i'll just say um in mini maybe i'll just give the file name so i'm just asking that in this file search about units i shouldn't have to specify the file name in the first place okay you see so it is unable to find that in the csv which is a shame so anyway but so i think for simple rag it works but for csv files and all that stuff you, as you can see it doesn't work it also supports pdf and that's an interesting thing which i noticed that it doesn't have txt files which is quite interesting um, in its supported files as far as that config file is concerned so all in all i would say that a long way to go for this tool i don't think so um that it lives up to its repo card at the moment and because it doesn't it's not because it says that it is quite easy you don't have to line write any line of code but you already saw that there are a lot of bugs in it it's not one of the easiest tool to configure i would say there are a lot of better tools that in the market at the moment but not throwing the project under the bus i think still a good idea especially around the provenance but it should work properly and they so i think my um constructive feedback is that they should make the installation uh, process easy they should update their github repo they should also make it very clear how to work with ola my and others maybe provide a sample configuration file and then also make sure that all of these small bugs where we can't upload the files where it doesn't work with csv um also it doesn't really i mean uh, there's a, another error where you have to put the files in your data directory other why it won't work which doesn't make sense so anyway that's it guys i will drop the link to the repo in video description let me know what do you think if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching